Hello and welcome to this AppSense demonstration. Today we're going to look at migrating users um, from using traditional profiles to being managed by uh, AppSense Environment Manager. And uh, now one of the challenges that people are facing at the moment is uh, with the migration of users between different platforms, different delivery methods and different technologies. Um, traditional approach to profiles has been either local or roaming profiles which have served a purpose up until now but we need more flexibility when it comes to managing the user moving forward. Um, moving between things like operating systems and moving between delivery methods of the OS, delivery methods of the applications uh, hasn't really been possible now without uh, a lot of long-winded manual intervention um, and it's something that uh, that is very important when it comes to user acceptance and user adoption of new technologies. So having user um, given the ability to move between different platforms uh, and still maintain their look and feel, their personality and their settings is something that is very important. Um, so we're going to look at moving uh, a user from using a traditional local profile um, in a one-to-one -one scenario, meaning that they're tied to really working on one machine, which is where their profile is stored and where their settings are kept, to a scenario where they can be flexible, they can move around, um, and there is no kind of manual intervention or migration when it comes to moving to different platforms, different operating systems. So what we're going to do is actually create a user from scratch now. Um, so just to show that there's no smoke and mirrors in this demonstration, um, we're going to be using a brand new user who I'm just going to go through the motions of creating now. So I'm on my domain controller and I'm just creating a new user in my users group and I'm just going to call him AppSense. There we go, just for ease of use. And here's our new user that's been created. Now just to show we're not going to be setting a profile path for the user, we're not using any logon scripts, uh, we're not using any group policy through Active Directory uh, either. And the user is just a member of our, our basic domain users uh, group within Active Directory. So that for the meantime is the Active Directory part done with. Uh, what we're going to do now is log the user on to an XP desktop. Now as this is the first time that the user is logging on, XP is going to be creating the user a local profile uh, on this machine. So this is uh, a scenario perhaps where an, a new person has joined the company, um, they've had their domain account set up and they're logging on to uh, a fat client PC for the first time. As you can see Windows is going through the motions of creating the, the profile for the user. And there we go, we're on the desktop now. So just to show, if I go into my computer and have a look at the C drive and documents and settings, We've got our AppSense user here, and this is the local profile that's been created for them. We just have a look a bit deeper in. We can see that the user is indeed using a local profile. We see the ntuser.dat file there, which is the user's uh, local profile in the, on this machine. Now this traditionally has been fine in a, in a scenario where it is uh, just a one-to-one -one situation with one user using one machine. Um, but it does mean that you have to manage numerous machines, numerous copies of your operating system. Uh, and of course, it's uh, it's not a very flexible um, situation either. So we're just going to make some basic changes to some applications here to um, uh, to give the impression of, of uh, a user personalizing their desktop. So as you can see, this is the first time that uh, Excel has been run. Let me just OK that. And we'll get the little splash screen to come up. So we can make some real basic changes to, to the look and feel of it. So we're going to change the position of Excel, perhaps change the color scheme as well. And we'll pull up another application here for say, we're going to use Notepad 2. So change Notepad, and uh, we're going to change the font as well to, let's call it something interesting, let's go with Wingdings and maybe the size too. Okay, so some, some basic uh, principles of what we call personalization. So a user has uh, set up the desktop the way that they need it, the way they, that they like to have it uh, look and feel. Of course, personalization goes beyond just uh, the aesthetic things that we've looked at here. It's also the business critical aspects such as the um, exchange server settings, the user's outlook profile, um, accessibility options, um, even down to things like if the user has a, a right or left-handed mouse, just anything that's specific to them uh, in their environment. And this is the information that has traditionally just been stored in uh, either local or roaming profiles. Now the problem with this is, 
that if the user were to move machine or if you were to change technologies and, and move to something like Windows 7, uh, the user settings would not inherently run with them. Um, even with roaming profiles, the move between Windows XP and Windows 7 uh, is not as straightforward as just simply copying the profile across because of the different profile versions. It's uh, not possible to, to move one to the other. They're not compatible with each other. Um, so we're going to log the user on to uh, Windows 7 machine now. And again, this is the first time the user is logged on. So the operating system is creating the user uh, a local profile again here, which is why it's just taking a few seconds for the RDP connection to go through. And once this is up and running and we're down to the user's desktop. So this is uh, a scenario that most people will be facing, uh, if not in the very near future, then certainly uh, in the mid to mid to long term future of moving operating systems from uh, Windows XP to Windows 7, or even it could be moving from uh, a physical environment to a virtual environment. So our user's now logged onto the Windows 7 machine, and again, we can just have a look at the user's profile in my computer. Now if we look under the Users tab, we can see our Absence user here. And we can, again, we'll just dig a little bit deeper and view the profile in full. And again, we see that we've got the user's profile there. If we open up the applications that we had previously personalized, then of course, because the settings were local to the XP machine, we don't get that roaming uh, across. So the user has to reset up their entire environment again, which for, again, the aesthetic things that we're looking at here, like the window size and color, is uh, a bit of a general annoyance for the user. But if it's things like their Outlook profile, um, then it's going to be uh, much more of a time consuming and uh, potentially kind of business hours lost um, scenario where the user is having to go through that. Uh, and of course, if you're using a, a VDI environment where you're on non-persistent desktops, then this is going to be something that the user is going to have to do every single time that they log on to a machine. So as we can see there with uh, with local profiles, there's there's no roaming, there's no switching between uh, one or the other. So I'm just going to log off the Windows 7 machine again. So this is the scenario that most people are faced with. Um, the user has their desktop set up, they've got it how they like it. We're looking to move to a, a, a new technology, we're keeping up with the times, but we want to be able to manage the user and get them to uh, be able to persist their settings across to whatever our new infrastructure is going to be. Uh, now it's becoming increasingly important to uh, to virtualize from the top down, and by that I mean the user first. Um, once the user has been virtualized, once they're managed away from the desktop, away from the operating system, then you can change any of the underlying architecture and the user layer isn't affected. So you can quite easily switch between uh, operating systems, between delivery methods, and the user is not affected. The goal uh, at the end of the day is to make sure that, that any change is as seamless and as hassle-free for the end user as possible. So this is where Absence can step in and help with this migration. So everything at the moment is tied to this machine, but we're going to look at migrating the user settings into the Absence store, so into the SQL database, into the personalization server, um, so that the user can maintain their settings wherever they go. So I'm going to log the user off uh, of this machine for the time being. Now my next step is to jump back into Active Directory and just for ease of management I'm going to just move the user into a, a, a group that I'm going to create in here called Migration. So again, a brand new freshly created group and we're just going to move the user into the migration group. So just to confirm that they are now a member up there. Excellent. Okay. Um, and again, that's uh, that's us done with Active Directory for the moment. So we're now going to jump into the Absence Environment Manager console, and we're going to look at personalization. Now, personalization deals with anything that's specific to the user, and as we mentioned before, anything from the aesthetic look and feel of the desktop to um, accessibility options. Uh, business critical settings that are specific to the user is all managed by uh, personalization. Um, so what we need to do is start managing uh, our user, our absence user, um, as uh, uh, an absence managed personalized user. 
Now rather than having to start from, from fresh and, and losing all the user's previous settings, what we can do is actually incorporate what they've done previously and migrate that into the new environment. So first off, I'm going to create a new personalization group. I'm just going to call this one migration. So I've got a few previous groups here that I've set up for my finance team, my engineers, and a default users group. But for my, mig my migration team, I'm going to add in a condition that they are within that group in Active Directory that we've just created. So anybody in this AD group is therefore going to fall within this personalization group. So the first thing we want to do is tell the personalization server that we want to migrate the user's current settings uh, over to the new environment. So if we go to the properties tab here, we've got a, an option down the bottom here to migrate uh, existing profiles. Now the way that personalization works on a day-to-day -day basis is that when a user launches an application, it's then that we bring in the user-specific settings for that app. Um, when the application closes, we intercept any writes that the application tries to make back to the system, and that's intercepted and stored in the backend database. So this way we're missing out two of the um, traditional trouble points with profiles, and that's bringing in a whole profile at, at logon, which can increase the user's logon time, and saving a whole profile back to a central repository at log off, and that's generally where corruption can occur. Um, but because we bring in uh, application settings as and when applications launch um, that uh, bypasses those two potentially troublesome points. With the migrate option on we will also read any um, uh, any settings that the user has previously made uh, to these applications and store those as well. So the idea is that we can migrate the user settings across to being managed by AppSense and then the user shouldn't see any change at all. It should be seamless for them apart from they'll get quicker logon times, more flexibility and um, a better experience all round. So we're going to turn on the Migrate Existing Profiles option to let the personalization server know that we're going to start uh, harvesting those settings from the user. Now next up we're just going to choose which applications we want. Um, now we don't have to manage every application in the environment, in fact we generally consider that uh, to be a bad thing. Um, the reason traditional profiles get potentially bloated is because it, they're saving too much data and often data that's not really relevant to the user. So we just choose which applications contextually the user needs to have managed for them. Um, so perhaps uh, if they're in finance they need SAP, they need Excel, um, but they may not need Paint and um, Adobe Reader. So it's just about managing the right applications for the right users. So we're just going to pop a couple of applications into our list here for my migration users and we're going to choose the two that I changed a moment ago. Um, which is Excel and Notepad. Now all we need to know to manage the applications is just the name of the executable that's that, that's going to run. We don't need to specify anywhere exactly what reg keys and which parts of um, app data the application is going to write to. It's uh, By default it's just the executable there. So that's it, that's our users, uh, anybody in this migration group uh, are now set up to be managed for Excel and Notepad and we're also going to harvest their existing settings out as we said before. Now for the meantime we're going to use the user's local profile still because that is our source of the user's existing data and the data we want to be migrating across. So generally when we're running in migrate mode this will run for a set period of time while we harvest up those settings um, before we can kind of do away with that roaming profile uh, with the local profile. So before I log the user back on and before I forget, we're just going to look at the analysis section for the migration group here. Now this displays a list of all of the users in this group who we are managing settings for and gives us a, a, a look into the database of all the um, all the data and all the settings that we have captured. If I hit display now, we should see nothing there, which is absolutely right. We've just created this group, no users have logged on, and therefore we shouldn't expect to see anything there. When we put back to this in a moment, it should look quite different. So we're going to log the user back onto the Windows XP machine. And as far as the user is concerned, this is exactly the same as it was the last time that they were uh, accessing the machine. And even if we go to the same applications again, so if we bring up Microsoft Excel, and if we bring up Notepad as well, 
then it's exactly the same as they left it before. As far as they're concerned, nothing's changed. I'm just going to close down both of these applications now. I'm going to go back to that analysis box that we looked at a moment ago. If I hit display again this time, you can see that we now have some data in there. If I jump into this, we see that we've got application data that we've saved into the database for Excel and for Notepad as well. So we've read the user's previous settings, we've captured those and stored those in the database. The user is still using the local profile uh, at the moment though. So what I'm going to do now is log the user back off again. So our finite period of, of migration is over, the user has used all the apps that we expect them to use. So we can now log the user off and we can switch them over to using a mandatory profile. Now the reason we generally endorse the use of mandatory profiles is because they're very small, they get wiped away when the user logs off and it doesn't leave any, uh, any unwanted data on the system. So all of the rest of my users are pointing towards exactly the same mandatory profile in this environment. So if I look at my engineer in the profile tab, see that they're pointed towards uh, a centralized mandatory profile. So I'm just going to take a copy of exactly the same path and I'm going to now enter that in for my AppSense user. So now when the user logs on, instead of getting the, um, the local profile that they did beforehand, they will now get a copy of this mandatory profile. So once again, we're going to log the user on to the XP machine. And again, the user shouldn't see any difference um, when they first log on. They should see exactly the same as it was before. Um, and again, the, the goal here is to get the, uh, the user acceptance as, as high as possible. And the way to do that is by um, making as least disruption for the user as possible as well. So the user is now using this mandatory profile. If I go into my computer, and I go into the C drive, and we look at my AppSense user, we can see that this time the user has got a enter user.man file. So this is the mandatory profile that the user has picked up from the server. We're no longer using that local profile that the user once had. But if I were to start up those same applications again, so Excel and whoops, can't find Notepad there. Let's uh, do it this way. Oh. Then again, as far as these are concerned, nothing has changed. But they now have gone from using a local profile and being tied to one machine to having their settings harvested, migrated, and stored in the AppSense uh, SQL backend and being delivered to them on demand um, as and when they need them. So we've now successfully migrated this user from using a local profile to uh, being managed kind of virtually by AppSense. Now I'm going to log the user onto the Windows 7 machine again. Now if you remember last time we done this, of course the user settings hadn't roamed across. Uh, we were still using local profiles on both machines. So this user is uh, going to pick up a copy of the mandatory profile again on Windows 7. So there's no need to make any additional changes there. So again just waiting for the uh, Windows 7 machine to, to log back on again. So again, by the time the user gets to the desktop, we're looking at a similar log on time as we did uh, beforehand and with the XP machine. So again, <coughs> if we were to take the user's XP machine away on a Friday and they come in on a Monday morning with their new uh, Windows 7 machine, when they open up their applications, they should get exactly the same look and feel as they had when they left the previous week. So again, with Notepad as well there. So we've managed to migrate that user across um, fairly simply. Um, although we've just done it with, with one user here, that migration group that we used earlier, we can add however many users we want and kind of do this all on bulk. But most importantly, there's been no disruption to the user whatsoever here. As far as the user is concerned, everything's remained the same. And when they've moved to the new environment, everything has followed them. And just to emphasize the point that we uh, save back the user settings as and when the applications close, if I were to make some changes on the Windows 7 machine here, so I'm going to just make some real basic changes to the look and feel of the application. So let's change the font in Notepad. So we'll change it back to something a bit more standard, Arial 12. And 
let's change the color scheme of Excel back to blue. Okay, so close down both those apps, move straight back over to our XP machine. Without having to log off, we can open those up again. And the settings have come instantly across. So that shows us that we, we're not tied to one operating system, we're not tied to one delivery method, um, and we don't bring in the user's settings at log on and log off, it's on a per application basis. So in summary, that's how easy it can be to migrate your users from Windows XP to Windows 7, or look into the future, Windows 7 to Windows 8, and whatever's going to come beyond that. Um, it negates the need for traditional profile types, and you can, of course, move your current settings over to being managed by AppSense, in this more flexible and, and a lot more user-friendly environment. For more information on AppSense, uh, please visit AppSense.com. My name is Bingarami Carster. Thank you very much for your time.